begin today, we're going to start with a song that we all can actually sing together. It is entitled, Come Thou Almighty King, Help Us Thy Name to Sing. So as we uh, sing this song, we just ask that you just lend us your voices. Rejoice 
and be glad in it. Yes. Because yes. something good yes. is going to happen to you. I say something good is going to happen to you. Do you believe it? Then say it to yourself. Something good is going to happen to me. One more time. Something good is going to happen to me. I receive it. That's that's a good word. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Let us stand as the acolytes come forward to light the candle to remind us as we come together in this place, the Lord is with us. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. Yeah, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting. Yeah, it's just a For Black History Month, this next number will be just for that. Entitled, Ride On King.
us for the first time, we would like to take this opportunity to personally welcome you to Ben Hill United Methodist Church. Would you please stand and remain standing as an usher has some important information to give to you. Will all of our visitors, first time, will you please stand? Amen, amen, amen. Thank you young lady for being with us. I believe I saw someone in the back. Thank you. Will you please remain standing just for a few minutes? Amen. 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 And if you are first time for the to joining us online, would you please put your information in the chat? We have a clergy person online to greet you. We want to ensure that we cover all of our bases. On behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Derek Rhodes, the clergy team, the entire Ban Hill congregation, we extend a warm welcome to you, to each of you. Thank you again for being with us, and we pray that something will be said, done, that you will see a glimpse of God as you visit with us today. Again, thank you for being with us. You may be seated. After service, those visiting with us in person, if you would please join us in the North X, our senior pastor would like to give you a personal greeting. Our announcement, every Sunday in February, we will celebrate Black History Month. The Social Concerns Ministry encourages everyone to wear the Afrocentric attire in a symbolic act of unity. And we thank you all for those that, have, that came dressed elegantly today. Thank you. Let's give everyone a big hand for dressing out. Amen. You still have more opportunities in the month of February to bring out your attire. Ash 
Wednesday service will be held in person in our sanctuary and online on Wednesday, February the 14th at noon. If you are unable to attend in person, there will be three opportunities to pick up your ashes. Saturday, February the 10th, from 10.30 to noon, you may drive through the Orange Senior Lot. On Sunday, February the 11th, before and after worship service, you may pick up your ashes from a table located near the organ, and we are asking only one package per family, please. You may also pick them up on Monday through Friday, that is February the 5th through the 9th, and February the 12th through the 13th, from the office, on Monday through Thursday from 8.30 to 3.30 p.m. and on Fridays from 8.30 to 1 p.m. And so if you miss these dates, please check the news on the hill or call the church office because we want to ensure that everyone receive their package. After our live worship service, you will be able to view our Ash Wednesday service online. Amen. A few more announcements. Guess what time it is, Van Hill? It is Super Bowl party time. Yes, it is back. <laughs> the Van Hill Youth Ministry will host an, its annual Super Bowl party on next Sunday, February 11th, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. There will be games, food, and drinks for everyone. So come dress in your favorite team's jersey, even if your team is not in the Super Bowl. Please come out in your favorite jersey and let's cheer on the teams. And last, we have two funeral announcements. Mr. James Cummings passed on January 29th. Funeral arrangements are pending from the family and Mr. Harold Bigelow pa passed on February the 3rd. Funeral arrangements for him are also pending. Let us keep all of these families in our prayers as we continue as a family to show our love to everyone. God bless you. God shows his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
So we're now in the month of love, and I don't know about you, but when I see a heart, the first thing I think of is love. We think and talk about love a lot. Often we say uh, things such as, I love ice cream, I love to play basketball, um, and we talk about a lot of things we love. So let's share a few things we love. What do you love? Oh yes, definitely love your mom. She does. <laughs> and I love you guys. So if we really want to know what love is, the best place to find the answer is in the Bible. God not only told us what love is, he showed us. The Bible says God showed how much he loved us by sending Jesus to die for us, even though we were sinful. That is real love. God loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, even though we didn't deserve it. So as we leave today, just remember, God loves you, and so do I. Amen. And I oh. um, Also, we'll have some um, packets from the usher, so before you guys go to your seat, make sure you grab one, because we're not going in the back today. Let the church say amen. amen. Give the Lord some praise for that children's sermon. Let's sing that together, Jesus Loves Me. 191, everybody together. Jesus Loves Me. Jesus Loves Me. Yes, I know. All oh, Everybody together. Jesus, what? Yes, Jesus. Oh, yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, yes. Let's sing the refrain one more time. Just a little louder. If you believe that he loves, sing it like you mean it. Yes, Jesus loves. Me. Everybody in the There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. I hear you now. I hear you now. Yeah. those children to hear when they come over that Jesus loves them. Amen. Amen. They need to hear that. Amen. They need to hear that, don't they? I, I turn my radio on sometime and I hear the music that they're listening to over and over and over again and it's being imprinted on them and we've got to work extra hard to unprint it. That's right. That's why we sing these songs. We want them to feel it and to know it that Jesus loves them. Do we believe it? Yes. I said, do we believe it? Yes. Let's prepare for communion. Page 26. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God walking henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God. 
let us confess together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things. Sorrow for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. How mercy upon us, how mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past. Let us continue to pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin yes, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, yes, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words the scripture says to all that turn to the Lord. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Now our scripture this morning comes to us from Isaiah 40. 21 through 31. Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. If you would please turn in your Bibles and stand as you are able as we read and listen to the Word of God. Isaiah 40, 21 through 31. Hear the word of the Lord. Don't you know, haven't you heard? Wasn't it announced to you from the beginning? Haven't you understood since the earth was founded? God inhabits the earth's horizon. Its habitants are like locusts, stretches out the sky like a curtain and spreads it out like a tent for dwelling. God makes dignitaries useless and the earth's judges into nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely is their shoot rooted in the earth. When God breathes on them and they dry up, the windstorm carries them off like straw. So to whom will you compare me and who is my equal, says the Holy One? Look up at the sky and consider who created these, the one who brings out their tenants one by one, summoning each of them by name. Because of God's great strength and mighty power, not one is missing. Why do you say Jacob and declare Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My God ignores my predicament. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow weary or tired. He understa His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youth will become tired and weary. 
Young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. And this is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. And it is prayer time, Ben Hill. You are invited to the altar, or you may remain where you are. As we go to the God that we know that hears the voice and the hearts of his children, and those of you that's online, we invite you to a position of prayer. As you are positioning yourselves, hear the words from the 28th Psalms of David. David says, to you, O Lord, I call my rock. Do not refuse to hear me, for if you are silent to me, I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplication. As I cry to you for help, as I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. Let us pray. God, our refuge, our comforter, our provider, hear the hearts of your children. God, we come giving you reverence because we know that you are the source of our life. The God that redeems us, the God that provides exactly what we need. The God that sustains us day in and day out. Lord, we come praying to you and giving you praise for what you have done and what you are doing in our lives. We are requesting your understanding that you will give us, oh God, your children understanding of some of the sickness that embodies us, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will give those that are hungry an understanding of just why they may be hungry and what they need to do, oh God, to fulfill that hunger. And we're talking about a spiritual hunger. God, those that need shelter, that need to be covered by your loving arms. God, I pray that they will find their way back to you. We know, Lord, that we are undeserving of your grace. But you are God Almighty, and you look beyond our fault, and you see our needs. And so, God, we thank you for that. We thank you for your undeserving grace, for your loving kindness that covers us, oh God. We thank you. Lord, we pray for your comfort upon those that are grieving. Please give them a gentle reminder that you are with them. Lord, teach us how to commit our ways to you, to trust in you, and believe that thine will be done in our lives, oh God, and that everything will be all right. All we have to do is trust in your loving arms. Oh God, we face injustice in this world, but we know that you are a God of justice. And so God, we pray that you will cover us the way that you covered David as he, J Joseph, as he faced adversity of every kind. But God, your loving hand was right there with him, guiding him through his journey, oh God, and always bringing him back, oh God, to renewed hope. And so God, we pray today that we will experience some of what Joseph experienced. Lord, we pray for your favor upon your children's life, those who earnestly seek you, O oh God, in the forgiveness of their sins. 
God, teach your children how to bear with each other, how to live in harmony, oh God, how we are to live in unity. In this month designated as Black History Month and a month of love, Lord, let your perfect love reign in our lives. Shower upon us abundantly, oh God, so that we can spread your love to everyone. How grateful, oh God. I am, oh God, that your loving kindness walks with me each and every day. And for that, oh God, I am grateful. I am grateful, oh God, that you assembled us all here today. So, oh God, that we can hear a message from our pastor. Oh God, we thank you for Reverend Dr. Rose and his family. And I pray that you will continue to shower your love upon him as he leads us, oh God. And as he pours out to us, show us, oh God, how to pour back into him. God, we thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice, oh God but under your authority. I pray, God, that you will meet them exactly where they are and provide some of what they need according to your holy and righteous will. God, we trust in you and we believe in your mighty hand. We know, God, that when we are weak, God, that you are strong and you will reach down and help us, God. We know, God, that when we are weary, that you are there, God, to surround us with your loving kindness. When we are sick, we know that you are a healer. When we don't know the words to pray, we know that we can call upon your name. And we're grateful for that, Jesus. Lord God, I don't know what's on the hearts and the minds of your children, but I know that you know all about us. And I pray, God, that you will shower upon them and let them know that you are God Almighty. God, we thank you for this day. And we pray blessings upon this worship service that you will continue to guide us. And we will experience a revival, a revival of our souls and our hearts. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Oh, God. 
Let the church say amen. Let's give the Lord some praise for the blood. Again, and take this opportunity to welcome our visitors who are with us. You may have come in after we did the welcome, so I just wanted to thank you for being here with us. Could have gone anywhere, but you decided to come and worship with us today, and we are indeed happy that you are here. And so I don't want anyone, as I always say, to leave this place without someone speaking to them. And you would be surprised at the number of people who come to a church, not this church in particular, but they go to church and no one spoke to them. And that's not a good first impression for a visitor. So I always take this moment to ask you to look to the person that's next to you and speak to you, to them, say good morning, look around, but say good morning to somebody. If you don't know the name, ask them the name. If you don't know the name, ask them the name. I didn't know that's Richard. So y'all write his name down. That's Richard. Our text has already been read this morning, but I'm reading an additional text, which is First Samuel, the third chapter. chapter looking at that first fourth verse so let's listen for the word of God and then the Lord called Samuel Samuel he said here am I and then the fifth verse and ran to Eli and said here am I will you call but he said I did not call lay down again and so he went and laid down this is the word of God for the people of God. Now I want to use as a text today from which to preach and teach, listening for God's call in 2024. Repeat after me, listening for God's call in 2024. God, we thank you. We magnify your name for what you've done already. Through the choir, reminding us about how powerful your blood is. Through the ushers and musicians, acolytes, the van driver who helps get people to church, for our ministers, communion stewards, we thank them all. For our music ministry, sound team, we thank them all and we thank you for working through them and we thank you for beginning their healing process and we pray that as the preacher come standing in John's shoes one more time give him Holy Ghost power in Jesus name 
in Jesus name we pray and all of his children say amen a recent college graduate struggled to find a job in a desired field. He had studied and worked hard for years, but despite numerous job applications and interviews, he faced rejection after rejection after rejection and disappointment. Frustration and self-doubt started to creep in and he considered settling for a job unrelated to his passion just to pay bills. However, before he made that decision, he decided to seek counsel from his mother. And she told him, this is the course of action. This is the approach that he should take. This is the course of action. Do you know what she told him? Today as we gather in this place in the presence of the Lord, I want to talk to you about discerning God's call in your life. It's a topic that has intrigued believers throughout history and continues to resonate uh, deep within us today. How do we recognize God's voice amidst the noise in the world? How do we discern his purpose for our lives in the midst of the choices and uh, distractions that surround us. These questions are not new. In fact, they have troubled the hearts of believers for generations. As we delve into the scriptures, specifically 1 Samuel, the third chapter, 1 through 10, we will find problems of why we are not hearing God's voice. Valuable insights and helpful guidance on how to discern God's call and find renewed strength in our faith journey. In Samuel's time, my brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord was rare. And there was not uh, many visions. The spiritual drought and uncertainty were a significant problem people faced, or faith problem faced uh, uh, by people of that era. Well, why was that? The primary reason for the spiritual drought was the absence of clear communication from God. In those days, God's message, uh, his messages, his, his uh, dreams and visions were not prevalent, leaving people without guidance from the Lord. Well, why is that? Well, y'all answered some good questions already this morning. During the era of Samuel, the Lord's message was seldom heard and there were not many visions because there was a spiritual decline 
and unfaithfulness of people. They were set on marching to the beat of their own drum and not following the path that the Lord Almighty had laid out for them. They were turned, determined to swim against the current, choosing their own course rather than riding the wave of Almighty God. Instead of dancing to God's tune, they were determined to choreograph their own dance even if it meant stumbling along the way. This disobedience created a spiritual barrier that hindered God's communication with them. In Samuel's time, the word of the Lord was rare. And there were not many visions because of cultural and moral decline. It seemed like society had misplaced its moral compass and accidentally left its spiritual fervor in the back of the closet right next to those forgotten mismatched socks. During Samuel's time, it looked like a society was having a morality clearance sale and the spiritual fervor was playing hide and seek but it seems to have forgotten the seat part. In Samuel's time, hearing the word of the Lord was like finding a needle in a haystack. And there were not many visions because of the noise and distractions. The noise and distractions of daily life made it difficult for people to focus on their spiritual lives. The constant demands, listen, of work and family and social pressures drowned out the subtle voice of God. Sometimes he shouts, but a lot of times he whispers. This problem is not unique to Samuel's era. It, it continues to affect us today. Now here are some reasons behind the problem. In our day and time, we are distracted and cannot discern God's voice because of modern technology, technological advancements. In this day and time, we are in the midst of a constant tug of war for our attention. I want your attention. No, 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 this constant war for our attention, tug of war with technolo technological advancements coming at us from all directions. Smartphones, social media, the internet have made it easier to stay connected, but also have increased the level of distractions. One person said, I should do a three-day social detox. Somebody said, well, yeah, I need to do a social uh, media detox. And that same person said, I should ask Twitter whether I should do that or not. <laughs> In this day and time, we are distracted and cannot discern God's voice because of modern technological advances. In our day and time, we are distracted and cannot discern God's voice because of busy and hectic lives. One woman said, I'm too busy to tell people how busy I am. <laughs> Our lives are often filled with busy schedules and work commitments and family responsibilities and social engagements. These demands can leave us with little time to reflect and, and, and spiritual uh, reflection on our lives, to contemplate what God is saying. In our day and time, we are distracted and cannot discern God's voice.
us because police overload. Hello, somebody. I heard somebody say the other day, my brain is like an internet browser. 17 tabs are open, nine of them are not responding, thousands of pop-ups, and where's that music coming from? <laughs> we live in an age of information overload, where news and updates and Lord have mercy, notifications flood our scene. Sorting through this vast amount of information can be overwhelming and, 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 and divert our attention from spiritual matters. In this day and time, we are distracted and cannot discern God's voice because of consumer, the consumer culture. Well, let me speak to you from the depths of my heart. My brothers and sisters, you see, there's absolutely nothing amiss with possessing things. We all desire to have a share of the worldly possessions, but there, and there's no sin in that. But, but let me tell you, when every thought that occupies the chambers of our hearts and minds is fixated on the acquisition of material things, well, that's when we've gotten ourselves in a situation that requires some soul searching. The consumer culture encourages constant consumption and material pursuits which can draw or drown out the desire for spiritual fulfillment. In our particular text, just in case you thought I forgot the scripture, <laughs> First Samuel 3, 1 through 3, the Bible says, now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord on the Eli. And the Lord's word was rare at that time. And visions were widely, weren't widely known. And one day, Eli, whose eyes had been grown so weak, he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet, and Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple where God's chest was. And the Lord said to Samuel, uh, here am I, he said. He said, Samuel heard to Eli and said, uh, here am I, you, you called me? He said, no, I didn't call you, uh, Eli replied, go, go, go lay back down, you hearing things. So he did, and again, the Lord called Samuel, so Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? He said, I didn't call you, boy, go lay down, I told you. You hearing things. Now Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. The third time the Lord called Samuel. He, he got up and went to Eli and said, now, here I am, you calling me? And then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And so Eli said to Samuel, go lay down, and if the call comes again, you say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And so Samuel went and laid down where he had been, and then the Lord came and stood there calling just before as he did before, Samuel, Samuel, so many people say that the Lord's, finding the Lord's word is like trying to find a four-leaf clover in a field. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus um, addresses believers and he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and with them and them with me and we'll sup together. In essence, the issue isn't whether Jesus is speaking. It's whether we are attentive. There's no doubt, my sisters and brothers, that God is speaking. Psalms 29 reveals his voice to be so potent that it moves mountains and clears forests. The question is, are God's people attuned to his communication? 
Can they perceive and embrace his constant word? In any given location, numerous uh, voices transmit through radio and television waves. The reason we don't hear them is not because the voices are absent, but because we're not what? Tuned in? Our antennas aren't raised, our televisions aren't on. The same holds true the spirituality. Our shepherd communicates continuously. He said, I speak and my sheep hear me. The question is, are we tuned in to the frequency? Am I receptive and understanding what he is conveying? God speaks. Say to me, God speaks. Oh, everybody didn't get that. I said, God speaks. How do we recognize God's voice amid the noise of the world? How do we discern his purpose for our lives in the midst of the many choices and distractions? Here it is. Here it is. First one. And I want you to write this down. To recognize God's voice amidst the noise in the world creates space for God. Create space for God. To distinguish God's voice in the midst of the world's clamor, make room for him. Construct a sanctuary for him. Some of y'all in here right now, heard the thing I said. Because you're thinking about tomorrow, you're thinking about your work. Some of y'all got some chicken at home, wonder if it's going to burn up before you get to the house. Clear the path, make a spot for it. Samuel's story reminds us of the importance of creating quiet moments for God in our lives. In the stillness, we are more likely to hear God's voice. In the calm waters, we are more apt to, to catch the whisper of God. Samuel's story underscores the need to make a date with we have silence for our God to speak to us. The songwriter said, hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, somebody's calling my name and it sounds like Jesus. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I? In those hush moments, that's where I'm most, we are most likely to catch an ear full of God's voice. Look at your neighbor and say, are you being silent enough? <laughs> say, uh-uh, you talk too much. <laughs> Consider setting a time every day for prayer and reflection. Create a sacred space where God can commune with you. But somebody said, how you do that? You got to prioritize silence. Disconnect from distractions. Simplify. Rather, declutter your physical and mental space. I got papers all over my office. I got to go in there and clean them up. I got clutter everywhere. Unclutter. Look at your name and say unclutter. (laughs) Somebody been wanting to say that. I just try to, I'm trying to give people opportunity to say what they want to say, you know. Samuel was a child of promise, chosen by God for unique destiny. But in the quiet of the night, when the world, the world was at rest, Samuel heard a voice calling his name. He thought it was Eli, the aged priest who laid nearby. Samuel in his innocence went to Eli saying, here am I, for you called me. Eli, though old and frail, was a trusted mentor and priest who had served the Lord faithfully for years. He recognized that it was not uh, he who had called Samuel, but rather the voice of God. And so Eli, with wisdom and reverence, instructed Samuel to return to his resting place 
telling him go lay down and if he calls you you shall say speak Lord your servant listens Samuel listen turned to Eli trusted mentor priest and guidance Proverbs 12 15 in case you missed it says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but a wise man listens to counsel. And this is my second point. You don't want to miss it, you want to write it down. To recognize God's voice amidst the noise of the world, seek wise counsel. Seek wise counsel. You see, my sisters and brothers, life is a journey often filled with winding paths and treacherous terrains and unexpected storms. But let me tell you, we are not alone on this journey. Just as the young Samuel turned to wise and trusted mentorship of Eli within the sacred confines of the temple, we too must seek the companionship of those who can offer us light, a wisdom, and the strength of support. Picture this in your mind, church. Life's journey is like a long and winding river. And we are the determined travelers in our humble boats. And sometimes the waters are calm and serene and our boats are gliding uh, smoothly. But in, the, but in other moments, the currents grow turbulent and the waves uh, threaten to engulf us. Now, as we navigate these waters, what do we need? We require shipmates in our vessels who can lend us a hand when the waters get rough and stir us away towards calmer seas. We need individuals who possess knowledge and who have gone through something that can tell us how to get back on track. And the winds of life blow through the forest. It is the oak tree unity and its support to one another that allows it to stand firm. My brothers and sisters, we live, we're like the mighty oak tree in our community. Our choices of companions and the roots and branches that hold us in our times of trial, we've got to seek mentors who can guide us. Spiritual guides who can illuminate our path and give us wisdom, trusted friends we can turn to. I saw this cartoon the other day with Charlie Brown and Lucy. And poor Charlie Brown is leaning against the wall looking like he had just lost his best friend. And Lucy steps in front of him and says... Discouraged again, huh, Charlie Brown? And Charlie Brown is too lost in his melancholy of his thoughts to reply. Lucy continues, you know what your trouble is? The whole trouble with you is you are you. <laughs> and with that uh, look of despair, he asked her, well, what in the world can I do about that? And now Lucy walks away unconcerned and replies, I don't pretend to be able to give advice. I just merely point out the trouble. <laughs> My sisters and brothers, we don't need people in our lives who can only point out the trouble. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> who are like a broken record, always playing the same old gloomy tune. And don't ever have anything good to say. I don't need somebody who's going to make me worse. I need somebody that's going to make me better. I, I don't need somebody who is lost and, and trying to tell me where to go and they don't know where to go. I, I need somebody who knows where they're going and who can help me to go and get where God wants me to be. God is talking to somebody right now. You following somebody, a friend or somebody that doesn't know where they're going. And God is telling you to get the heaven away from them. They're taking you in the wrong direction. Hmm. 
Remember the lessons of Samuel and Eli. Let us get people around us who can help us. And then third, my third point as I bring it on home, I don't, that man in the back don't worry, I'm getting there. <laughs> third point, to recognize God's voice amiss the noise of the world, be open and willing. Lord, y'all got that heat up too high. <laughs> be open and willing. I don't want you to miss that. When God called Samuel, he responded, speak for your servant is listening. Samuel was a little scared, a, a bit spooked, somewhat freaked out. But I don't see Samuel making any excuses. Saying I'm too young, he play, I don't see him playing the blame game, uh, dancing around the problem. He didn't say, Lord, I, I'm too busy with my own plans. Or, Lord, I'm not interested in your call. No, my sisters and brothers, Samuel's response was swift and resolute, devoid of hesitation and distraction. Speak, for your servant is listening. With these words, Samuel displayed a readiness and an eagerness to follow God's lead that should inspire us. It's a message that uh, resounds with clarity, reminding us that when God calls, our response ought to be immediate and enthusiastic and without reservation. In our lives, my dear friends, we often find ourselves juggling between the man's of this world and the cares of our careers and families and our ambitions. But let me tell you, God is not beholding to our schedules. He's not beholding to your desires. It is a divine invitation, a beckoning to align our lives with his purpose and his will. I heard a preacher call me the other day. He called me the other day and he said, you know, I want you to do something. He said, you ought to do this because you had been healed. <laughs> and I said to him, you, you telling me uh, that I ought to do this because I'm at being healed? Well, I didn't hear that call. God told you to do it. That's, that's how it is a lot of times people we come up with stuff and then we want to put it off on somebody else if God is speaking to you you go do it we got a lot of people in the church with a lot of ideas but just sitting down and want somebody else to do it so you ain't going to meddling now like Samuel we got to be ready and willing to heed the call when God is calling us. A young man, as I come closer, <laughs> I'm almost home. I keep hearing somebody cough that maybe it ain't bring it to the end, Reverend. If you got a cold, excuse me. A young man, hopeful college graduate, bursting with dreams soon face the harsh reality of job honey and despite his education and skills the job market proved as relentless and an, as an unending storm rejecting his application eroding his confidence frustration and self-doubt became his constant companion dimming the passion that once fueled his ambition. In the darkest hour, he sought solace from his mother's wisdom, and she advised him to take this course of action, to take this approach, and trust in God's divine timing. During this waiting period, he rolled up his sleeves, my sisters and brothers, and volunteered for a nonprofit organization gaining valuable experience and connections. And though unpaid, it brought him fulfillment and allowed him to make a positive impact. And one day, 
doing his volunteering work, he crossed paths with someone with a company he admired. And this chance meeting led to an interview and eventually the job for which he longed for. It was a dream come true. And he appreciated the winding journey that brought him to this point. Oh, waiting on God, my sisters and brothers. During challenging times can lead to unexpected opportunities and personal growth. Sometimes the path of our dreams may involve detours and delays. But in the end, it can lead us to where we are truly meant to be. Samuel's initial call by the Lord may not have been immediate evidence. Oh, God's plans can be as slow to unfold as molasses in January. But it does. Oh, it does. When it does, what a sweet revelation it is. Oh, to pick out God's voice from the bustling crowd of the world, it's critical to hang in there like a spider in a web, waiting for the right moment and relying on God's clockwork timing. Can I get an amen? amen? God's plan is not bound by earthly timetables, but oh, if we trust and keep the faith and wait, just like Samuel's patience led to God's plan unfolding, our patience in our spiritual journey can bring remarkable and life-changing outcomes. Oh, to identify God's voice amidst the noise of the world is necessary to be patient in God's timing. You see, the fast-paced noise of the world, we can sometimes lose ourselves, get caught up in the distractions. And yet, my sisters and brothers, God's voice remains constant. A gentle whisper during the chaos. But here's the key. God operates on his own divine time. And his timing is flawless. It's like waiting for a masterpiece to unfold. Much like a skilled artist creating a breath canvas, breathtaking canvas. When we rush ahead to try to force God's hand, we risk missing out on the beauty he intends for us to have. Oh, patience, my brothers and sisters, is the bridge between the noise of the world and the stillness of God's voice. Let us be patient. Let us hold our horses in eager expectation. For the Lord is crafting a masterpiece in our lives. Wait and have faith and listen. God knows your situation. God's got your back. God is tuned in to what you're going through. God is in the loop regarding your situation. Oh, I want you to know that the good Lord above is setting the stage for your breakthrough. Can I get an amen? amen. He's getting it all together. And you got to be patient. He's setting up the stage for your comeback and your triumph and your moment of glory. So lift your voices in praise for your breakthrough is near. Stand firm in your faith and remember that the trials of the day are paving the way for the triumphs of tomorrow. Hallelujah, somebody. Wait, have faith and listen. God is mixing up your success plan. God is cooking up your recipe of deliverance. God is crafting the blueprint of your salvation. God is writing the script of your, of your deliverance. God is setting the stage for your healing. Wait, have faith, and listen. Your healing is coming. Wait, have faith, and listen. Your joy is coming. Your help is on the way. Your light at the end of the tunnel is on the way. Your reinforcement is on the way. You're over the hump. 
is on the way. Hey, hey, somebody. You're just around the corner is on the way. Wait. Have faith. And listen. 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 He has not forgotten about you. He's calling your name. Listen. 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 God, as we open our hearts and open our minds and open our ears, speak for we are here. Speak, Lord. Speak. Speak, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to your children. For we are here listening. Guide me, O thy great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land. The word of God for the people of God. We want to open the doors of the church and perhaps there's somebody here this morning that God spoke to this is the moment this is what we're talking about it starts in the church when he speaks to you about joining a fellowship coming down the hall being coming down the aisle being brave enough to do it why don't you come at this time give the preacher your hand and guard your heart it starts now listening why don't you come Why don't you come? He's talking to you. Don't wait. For tomorrow may be too late. Come. Give your life to him because he can do more with it than you can. Oh yes. Oh, why don't you come? Speaking to you now. All you got to do is move. Take one step. He'll help you. Oh yes. Oh, he's able. Don't wait, don't wait. Speak to my heart. Oh, he's able. There's somebody standing right there now waiting on you. All you got to do is step out. All you got to do is step out. Don't wait, don't wait. Oh, yes. Keep singing, choir, because this is a moment that sometimes it takes people time to move. They're thinking about it. Listen and move. Yeah, he's got the rest of it. All you got to do is listen and move. Oh, he's calling your name. Wonderful. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart.
to speak, Lord, speak to our hearts. God has truly spoken to us this morning. We certainly have been fed. You praise God. Praise God. And we're going to continue to worship with the giving of our tithes and offerings. And as we stand here in this sanctuary, looking out on the future for God's call on our life in 2024, let's look forward with hope in what is possible. Amen? Amen. Matthew 19, 26 reminds us that with God, all things, all things, all things are possible. And as we give this morning, let's give with an expectant hope of what is possible with God in our lives, in our church, and in our world. And you may give today online at benhillumc.org forward slash giving. You may give with the Ben Hill app. You may text to give at Ben Hill UMC to 73256 or you may give in the offering plate this morning as the ushers come to serve us here in the sanctuary so let us pray would you pray with me let us pray oh creator god oh god we come to you lord in this holy moment looking out on 2024 and listening for your call on our lives and we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We are a blessed people. You have blessed us to be a blessing to others and to make a difference in the lives of people in our community. Oh God, we lift up our tithes and our offerings to you, Lord, and we ask that you would consecrate them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. Use them, Lord, to bear witness of your love in this world. And may we serve you, Lord, with our whole hearts being the hands and the feet of Jesus to those in need. Continue to bless us, O oh God, that we might be instruments of your love. And these and all other blessings we ask in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Amen, amen, and amen.
If the acolytes and ministers would join me at the communion table as we prepare to take communion. At this time we will consecrate the communion. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tense of mercy does give thy Son, our only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by the one offering of himself a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and we bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his passion, death, and resurrection may be partakers of the divine nature through him who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me and likewise after supper he took the cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink ye all of this for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let's make sure everyone has communion. If you don't have communion, please raise your hand. We'll bring you one. Everyone can take communion. You don't have to be a member. If you don't have communion, please raise your hand. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peel off the top. Those of you who are taking communion with us online, you can use bread or water. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is broken for you. Take and eat and feed on him by faith and with thanksgiving. Now this is the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is shed for you. Preserve thy soul and body into everlasting life. Take and drink ye all of this in remembrance that he shed his blood for you and for many. Go in peace, go and remember that he said, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many. Go and do likewise. Let us stand as we prepare for the benediction. The acolyte would come and extinguish the candle and lead us out with the light to remind us as we go out into the world, he goes with us. 
of God go with us as we go our separate ways to tell some man, some woman, some child who is down and depressed and lost that there is a God who is speaking. He said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I shall give you rest. And all of his children said, Amen.